and he can't hit the second. Celtics leading by seven. Here is Daniels. At the floater. It's hauled in by Andre Miller. That was simply a case of style over substance, and he missed the shot as a result. And look at how he posed on the rim for a few seconds after that one. That's never going to endear you to your opponents. They don't like that kind of stuff. No, he was enjoying that one so much he didn't want to let go. Yeah, I think he was throwing salt in the wound, though. Here's O'Neal. Oh, he gets the rebound. I think the defense was crowding him a little bit, threw him off some, so he had to fade just to get room to shoot, and then couldn't adjust. First quarter over, and big numbers up on the board. Celtics lead by five. Well, their defense has been superb. This Thursday night, Dirk Nowitzki and the Dallas Mavericks go up against LeBron James and the Miami Heat. The NBA season blasts off. Hoops action. Closely contested game here at the start of the second quarter. Here's Mills. Here's who's on the floor for Nate McMillan. Mills out there with Rudy Fernandez. Then there's Batum, and it's Camby and Oden. Celtics leading by five. The alley-oop. Nice finish on the alley-oop. Boy, these guys have a terrific feel for each other. You have to, you have to, in order to make plays like that. Don't you think you can tell that they love being on the court together? Boy, they're having a good time. And here are the Trailblazers now. Seven-point differential. Next up in the docket, the Bucks following this one. That game is the first and last of their homestead. O'Neal's there. Shoots from the post. It's blocked. Another year for Greg Oden, and unfortunately, another injury. It really is a shame, Kevin. Um, you think about what those Portland fans were hoping for and what they had gone through with Bill Walton 25, 30 years ago. Um, Oden's a great kid. I hope he can get the injuries behind him. Now Daniels. Defended by Fernandez. Daniels, no good. Trailblazers trail by seven. But the positive going back to Odin with last season, you could see, Clark, the progression from year to year, albeit brief in demonstration. Yeah, and you hope that's the foundation that he's able to build on once he does get completely healthy because you're right, he has made improvement when he's been out on the floor these first couple of years. A different look for Portland. Marcus Aldridge has checked in for Camby. Matthews comes in for Rudy Fernandez. And Jared Bayless subbed in for Patrick Mills. The jump off. Four on the clock. The shot misses. And the Celtics go with it the other way. They've led by as much as 10. 17 wins against the East last year for these Blazers. A good mark for them. Yeah, it was good, but they had a better record the year before when they were an incredible 22 and 8 against the East. Impressive. Celtics leading by seven. Let's go to our great sideline reporter, Doris Burke, for an update. Doris? Guys, Rajon Rondo hinted back in February of last season that there was turmoil in the Celtics locker room. He said every guy had to look in the mirror and had to hold themselves accountable. We've got to be a team with no agendas. In the locker room, you could feel it. You don't feel like it's the same continuity and camaraderie in the locker room as it was the first year. We've got to find a way to get that back. Guys, going into the playoffs, they seem to pull themselves together. We'll see if that continues into this season. Thank you, Doris. And young Rajan Rondo has spoken. Kevin, I like what he's doing. I mean, you're the point guard. You're the future of this franchise. He didn't call out anybody specifically. He's just saying we lost something. And now we've got to find a way to get it back. The Celtics team came away with 17 wins against the West last year. Solid numbers against a really tough conference. No good on the free throw. No good at the stripe this time. Second misses also. 
That record Clark Boston had against the West, you mentioned those numbers were actually down four from a year ago for the Celts. Yeah, but across the board, they had a bit of a down year overall. It's hard to stay around 60-plus wins like they did, so you can't really blame them for that. Wafer defended by Batum. Wafer for three. Bayless gets the board inside. Trailblazers trail by five. Knocks it loose. Wafer inside the three-point line. Puts too much on it. The Blazers on offense. Only giving up two points this quarter. Here is Bayless. Matthews, he's covered by Daniels. I think this quarter particularly, we're seeing them having trouble keeping possession of the ball. Oh. 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 Good. Wow. What about the setup? I mean, there are assists, and then there are delicious dimes. <laughs> well, putting it up there soft and throwing it down hard. Time called here. The Blazers decide to talk it over. So both teams making some changes here. The 2K leaderboard provides us now with this list of last season's assist leaders. Juan Jean Rondo fourth. And they made their teammates better too because they're willing to give the ball up. They're interested in getting other people shot and did it in spectacular fashion too. Here is Miller. He's covered by Rondo. Here's Roy. Here's Odin. That falls. Great assist by Brandon Roy. Well, for a player who is counted on to lead his team in scoring and take big shots, Brandon Roy still has a great shooting percentage. Yeah, he shot 47% from the field. He's an excellent free throw shooter. And anytime you're in that 46 and above range as a two guard from the perimeter, um, that's pretty good. Pierce. That one is good on the way in. Pierce has got nine. He's just so gifted offensively. He's a tough guy to match up with. Back to Miller. He's picked up by Rondo. For three, Fernandez. And Shaq pulls it down. And Clark with Roy to see numbers that high. Shooting-wise, is rare as a guard. Yeah, especially when you factor in the amount of ball handling he does for Portland, too, Kevin. I mean, he's got a lot of responsibility. He just doesn't score. He sets other people up, and he handles all of it well. It's Rudy Fernandez on the wing. Roy is whistled for the loose ball foul. That's his first foul. The effort was there even if the execution was lacking. He's trying to get to those offensive rebounds, but they said he went over the top that time. And the Celtics making a change here. Allen's checked in, and the Trailblazers making a change. Celtics leading by nine. Now here's Rondo. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Philadelphia. Here's Shaq. Buries the short-range shot. Shaq's got six. Watching the team shoot this well is fun for some fans watching at home, but it's no picnic for the guy who's coaching the defense. I mean, he's really upset with how his team is not giving the effort at that end of the floor. Simply put, that's just bad defense. Boy, he can produce some rim rattlers, Kevin. This guy can fly. Well, the whole building, Clark, knows what's going to happen when he goes up. Good execution on the break leads to the nice bucket. For three, Roy... Kept alive. Here's Prisbilla. And he makes it look so easy laying it right in. He doesn't have a lot of game with his back to the basket, but that time he found a way to get it done in there. That's a pretty good move for a guy you don't expect to score in the paint. And here's Rondo. Covered by Miller. Down to five on the shot clock. With one on the clock and another basket for Boston. Sometimes folks forget about his decent mid-range jumper. He can knock those down all game given a chance. And the first half is now in the books. Paul Pierce playing very well. He has 11 points and you can add one. 